Chapter 1.5 The Zetans Discussing the Events That Took Place The extraterrestrial species Zetans gathered in a semicircle around an obelisk that they had erected in the divine dimension to remember the day of their fellow friend Yahweh's betrayal more than a millennium ago. In the distance, they could see the palace that Yahweh had expelled them from. It was as impressive as it had been when they built it many thousand years ago. But the tear in the space-time that enclosed the palace stopped them from coming back there. The Zetans were the most advanced species to ever appear in the universe and the only ones to ever manage to physically travel between the normal dimension and the divine dimension. At the height of their civilization, they have had portals spread across the Milky Way that could teleport them between the normal dimension and the divine dimension and then back to another location in the normal dimension as a way to travel faster than light. All of this had been lost in the apocalyptic war between the Zetans and the failed product of their own creation, the Xenos, which virtually wiped out the Zetans' planet of Zitani and killed a lot of their own species entirely, except for a few Zetans scattered in the divine dimension, left scavenging for food and water. The few Zetans remaining in the universe has had a stagnant life in the divine dimension with their remaining portal to Earth intact, which they could use to pose as multi-gods to the simple-minded humans on earth to receive the offerings and supplies they needed to have a good life in the divine dimension. All of this was destroyed, however, when Yahweh had a psychotic breakdown and destroyed the last active Zetan portal to earth and subsequently killed himself and his secret lover. Since Yahweh destroyed the last active portal to Earth, the Zetans had millennia of hell. Being physical beings, they needed food and drinks to sustain themselves, yet nothing of this was possible to produce in the divine dimension. With the state of timelessness of the divine dimension, they couldn't die from natural causes, age, or bear offspring. Yet, as physical beings, they could still feel thirst and hunger. The result was that they were always hungry and thirsty, however kept alive by the timelessness they were stuck in. When they were all gathered, Zeus began to speak. Zeus said, Fellow Zetans, for thousands of years we have been starving in this timeless abyss with no means of living. But I see hope in the form of a human, a promised human that will reactivate the portals and give us back our rightful place as gods on earth. The woman I'm talking about, her name is Kayla Eisenstein, and she has something that our former hosts were lacking. She has access to a level of technology that is unprecedented in the history of mankind almost on par with our technology during the peak of our civilization. She has disposed of the human villain Abraham, who was the puppet of traitor Yahweh, whose unholy human presence I'm sure you have felt roaming around in our old palace. Odin said, Indeed we have. Fall human taking his own right to step foot in our palace without our permission. Good riddance. I'm questioning your faith in this Kayla person, however. She is the sworn enemy of the Terran Council that rules Earth and Mars. Having her travel around on Earth, activating all the switches needed to restart our portals to Earth seems impossible. 
Why not influence a powerful tyrant to do our bidding instead of using a Martian woman? Shius said. You are both right and wrong, my old friend. Influencing a mighty Terran leader would be better, but unfortunately, the genetic makeup of humans makes a telepathic connection to them so unlikely. So we only get a human that we can influence directly once every few hundred years. And this destined human is Kayla. It is, however, irrelevant. She is our future. I have foreseen it, and my premonitions are never wrong. Brahma felt obliged to join in on the conversation. He was also a high-ranking Zetan, and Brahma did not like listening to other high-ranked Zetans trying to show off to their lesser brethren with their supposed powers. Brahma said, Zeus, if your premonitions are so flawless, how come our civilization got wiped out by the Xenus and how could you let Yahweh destroy the last active portal to Earth, our only way back to the normal dimension? Zeus said, Silence, you arrogant fool! I never claimed omniscience. I argued that all my premonitions are correct, that is not the same. I never claimed we would not get destroyed by the Xenus. I never claimed Yahweh would not betray us. Whenever I do share a premonition, however, it always comes true. Brahma said, Really? Is that so? Well, you seemed surprised when Kayla murdered Joshua. Zeus said, Yes, that was surprising and seemed illogical following her emotional thought pattern up to that point. Primarily, since we only influenced her to kill Abraham and not Joshua. Then again, humans are known to be emotionally volatile and prone to violence and they have their own willpower. That's why we used them to fight the Xenus back when planet Zitani still existed. However, the killing of Jeshua is no concern to us, and everything is going according to plan. I would like to thank Odin for his efforts. If he hadn't helped me direct a psionic blast resulting from Kayla's incorrect usage of the Divine Crown, we would not have received a favorable in outcome. I declare this meeting finished. Keep observing human activities in the regular universe so we can come up with a plan on how to proceed. After Zeus had said this, all the Zetans dispersed, and each went on their own way. Although they did not have anything to do or to go anywhere in particular, most of them preferred solitude, as they could meditate deeper in that state. Most of the Zetan communication occurred telepathically anyways so they did not need to be close to each other to talk. Moreover, the presence of too many peers amassed too much psionic energy in one place, preventing the Zetans from reaching deep meditation. Most Zetans preferred to be semi-permanently in deep meditation, as that was the only state of mind where the Zetans wouldn't feel the hunger or thirst that were eternally tormenting them. Brahma reached his meditation spot and was tormented by a thought. What if someone else had influenced Kayla to murder Joshua? What if Ranga was the one behind it? 
The idea gave him shivers, but he shrugged it off. Rangda was condemned to forever stay in a small prison cell far, far away, with the psionic force field stopping her from contacting anyone. At least that was what Brahma told himself. Full of discomfort, Brahma decided to go to sleep to forget about his hunger and thirst. He slept a terrified sleep, full of nightmares.